Hello, this is Joe coming to you with thoughts from the purple chair. I thought tonight I'd stay home and do it from the comfort of my yard with some tiki torches. And if you can't see me, it's okay. But if you can hear me, it'll be all right. Um, there. Hello. Um, last week at work, somebody asked me if Jesus was really God because he had heard, like we've all heard, you know, Oh, I believe in that God stuff. Uh, Jesus was a good man, but I don't think he ever said he was God. You know, some other things like that you hear out there. Um, and I wanted to try to give some honest thoughts and some scriptures about it. And see if we can get some words that we can share with other people about it. So there's some very common scriptures. John 1.1 1, 1 comes to mind. And I'll touch on that, but... There's some more. There's several places that Jesus is equating himself with God the Father. So in Luke 20, chapter 20, verse 41, he's um, the Sadducees are trying to catch him in a lie, and they're asking about if this woman, her husband dies, and her, you know his brother marries her, and so on through seven brothers, because that was their tradition. The, mar the brother would marry the, the wife, if they didn't have anybody else. And they say, whose wife will she be in the resurrection? Well, they didn't believe in a resurrection, so they were trying to catch Jesus in a lie. So, Jesus said, uh, let me ask you a question. And he turned it around on him. He said, why is it that Christ, the Messiah, is said to be a descendant of King David? For David himself wrote in the book of Psalms, God said to the Lord, the Messiah, sit at my right hand, until I place your enemies beneath your feet. How can the Messiah be both David's son and David's God at the same time? That's one place. Because there's many places in the New Testament where Jesus says, tells people he is the Messiah. He's the one they've been waiting on. So right there, he said, I'm God. Okay. Um, and there's a side note here. There's some scripture here that's relevant to today with our politics that are going on and the you know, the people that want to overthrow our religion, our government, our morals, our everything that's going on. Very real struggle in 2020. Uh, so let me see if I can tie this together with something, something to think about. Then with the crowds listening, he turned to his disciples and said, Beware of these experts in religion, for they love to parade in dignified robes and to be bowed to by the people as they walk along the street. And how they love the seats of honor in the synagogues. And at the religious festivals. But even while they're praying long prayers with great outward piety, they are planning schemes to cheat widows out of their property. Therefore, God's heaviest sentence awaits these men. That almost sounds like some uh, politicians' convention speeches. And, you know, just think about it. Okay, so let's go to a very popular one. John 1.1. 1, 1. I'm going to read 1 through 10. So that you can understand this. Uh, some JWs will tell you that this does not say that Jesus was God. In most translations like the, the King James say, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. But the Jehovah's Witnesses Bible has changed that to where it says the Word was a God. They put just the letter A in there and changed the meaning. They try to make Jesus equivalent to an archangel. In fact, I think they say he's the archangel Michael totally false. Jesus is not a created being. Excuse me for the light. I'm trying to get it right. I'm just trying to make it where you can see something in the video. And my torch went out. Um, okay. John 1.1. 1, 1. Before anything else existed, there was Christ with God. He has always been alive and is himself God. He created everything there is. Nothing exists that he didn't make. Eternal life is in him, and this life gives, gives light to all mankind. His life is the light that shines through the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. God sent John the Baptist as a witness to the fact that Jesus Christ is the true light. John himself was not the light. He was only a witness to identify it. Later on, the one who is the true light arrived to shine on everyone coming into the world. But although he made the world, the world didn't recognize him when he came. That's the problem that we have in this world. We have a lot of people that... Even people that call themselves Christians do not have a relationship with Christ. 
Um, Jesus Christ didn't promise you a life of prosperity. He did not promise you that looking your best on Sunday and saying, God is good all the time. I mean, he is, but, you know, cliche stuff. God didn't say that you would have a perfect, sweet, happy life. He did promise that you would be persecuted, that you would suffer. And if you have not suffered for Jesus Christ, you need to ask yourself some pretty tough questions. Okay, so there's another scripture in reference to Jesus' divinity. And I'm going to go a little further into the New Testament and go to Philippians chapter 2. Gulf Power Electric Company. That's how I remembered it when I was a child. Philippians 2. Wait, General Electric Power Company is what we were talking about. That's right. Uh, almost there, almost there, almost there. Okay. Don't be selfish. Don't live to make a good impression on others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourself. Don't just think about your own affairs, but be interested in others too and in what they're doing. Your attitude should be the kind that was shown to us by Jesus Christ, who, though he was God, did not demand and cling to his rights as God, but laid aside his mighty power and glory, taking the disguise of a slave and becoming like men. And he humbled himself even further, going so far as to actually die a criminal's death on a cross. Yet it was because of this that God raised him up to the heights of heaven and gave him a name which is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It's pretty plain that uh, if someone says to you, Jesus never said he was God, they have not read the Bible. And if you uh, want to write down the ones I've given you, there's a lot more too, even in Genesis. Let us make man in our image. Who do you think that was? That was God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They are one God. They have three different manifestations. And I, th this is my personal opinion, so take it for that, just my opinion, was that God the Father is the like the honor and the royalty of like the command of God that's his his powerful you know um, image what you think of when you think of the the regalness the power and the might of God that Jesus is the love the personification of love long suffering and patience with his creation that he loved us and the Holy Spirit is the helper that he has promised us once we have accepted him to come and teach us and change us and, and let us grow to be more like Him. Like all God, just different functions, different parts of His personality. And it's helped, it helps me to understand it. I'm not putting that out as an actual fact, so I don't want to stand before Him one day and have that wrong. I'm just saying it's kind of easy for me to understand it that way. So, um, So what does all this mean in relation to the law, the Old Testament, the New Testament. Does the Old Testament law apply to us? Well, as believers, no. Does it apply to people in the world who are not saved? Yes, absolutely. Here's why. Um, the original purpose of the Old Testament law was after we were fallen, all these, uh, you know, I don't know how many hundreds of laws there were. The Levitical laws, uh, Deuteronomy, and all of that contained laws. Sacrifices you had to make when you did this, that, or the other thing. From All the way from small sins to huge ones, heinous ones. And Jesus did fulfill that law. But, Jesus paid the price with his blood. And if you ask him to be your savior, and you mean it, and you're covered by that blood, he's paid the price for every sin you've ever committed or ever will. And some people think, 
well, what about my future sins? I, I'm scared. You know, I know Jesus paid for my sins when I asked him to, but I've sinned since then. And what about the sins in the future? Let me explain something to you. For anybody on this earth right now that got saved, every sin you've ever committed was in the future to Jesus. He already knew what you were going to do, and he knows what you're going to do yet. So, if you're saved, you're saved. Um, there's a lot of reward to be given in heaven. And some people are going to make it in like the flames are just touching their behinds. They're barely going to... They're going to get there, and heaven's going to be, you know, extremely wonderful and everything, but there's more there for those who really try to obey him and really seek his his glory in their own lives by humbling themselves. Please excuse me, I got a little bit of the hiccups. I'm trying to fight them. So, the Old Testament law is really, the purpose of it was to point out to man, man's inadequacy to obey the law of man. It wasn't that God wanted to kill everybody with sticks and stones. Not at all. But so many things that were ritualistic and stuff were meant to point out the ridiculousness of us trying to live the law and fulfill it ourselves. I'm trying to make this light not make me, it kind of makes me look all dark and stuff. I don't like it. Anyway, so I hope that this helps just a little bit. Um, and does this mean that we can break the Old Testament law? Well, the, the sad part is, is that in some way we break it almost every day. You know, like, the Jesus said, He who is out without sin cast the first stone with the adulterous lady, right? And then Jesus pointed out, um, He said, you know, any man who looks up at a woman with his lust in his heart has committed adultery with her in his heart, and he's guilty. And I think what He's trying to point out there is that probably every man has done that at least once in their life. And so there's no way on our own we can fulfill the law and the expectation of the righteousness of God. We can't do it. So I encourage you to find Jesus. I encourage you to have a ready answer for those of you who ask if Jesus Christ is God. The answer is yes. The answer is it's clearly written in the Bible. Um, I love you. I'm praying for you. Uh, share and like and subscribe, please. I'm trying to get this little ministry to grow into a little bit bigger ministry. So... God bless you, and I'll see you next week.